Hey guys, and welcome to another Hobby Tips. So today we're going to be learning about glazing colors into brass. In this case, uh, the armor of a Stormcast Eternal. But you could really do this on any part of the model, but for the purpose of this one, we're going to do it on a whole model as if you're doing all the armor. Um, yeah, but you could yeah, do it on just small parts or whatever you like. Um, to show you how it looks when it's done, I've got one here and you can see all the, the colors. It almost looks like, I guess, heated brass or heated copper. You can see all those purples and blues and those little bright areas on the edges. It just looks really cool uh, and adds a lot of depth to your, to your metals. And I think it's a, it's a really fun technique and one you can do very quickly. So that's what it looks like at the end, but we're gonna go through it now. So what you wanna do is have um, the model undercoated black. In this case, I've sprayed it with uh, Citadel's Chaos Black undercoat spray. And then I've sprayed it with the Citadel uh, Rune Lord Brass. So if you wanna do just a single, a single area, you could just paint on the Rune Lord Brass. Uh, but for the purposes of this, we're going to do it over the whole model. So it's been undercoated in that. And um, we're going to begin by going through a series of washes, some dry brushing, and then some glazing, and then finally some little line edge highlights with some silver. So I've got um, Storm, Storm Host Silver here. I've got uh, a range of colors. We've got magenta, purple, a blue, a sepia a brown, and the Nolan wash. So that's all you're going to need to get started. And um, we'll begin. All right, so the first step is to get the brown brown on. So the sepia tone is, is a great one because it's a little bit uh, lighter than Agrax Earthshade. And so you really want something with a little bit more lighter brown showing through. So it actually shows up when all the other washes go on. With the Agrax, it, it kind of darkens it down too much and you can't get a good finish. So we don't want to do that. So we just get some of this sepia here, mix a bunch of water with it, usually about one, one drop, maybe a little more in. So we, we still want it relatively brown. Uh, not too much like a glaze, but just a bit of water in there just to break it up so it's not too heavy. And then all we're going to do is just wash this straight over the model and start getting that brown into all those areas uh, in between the armor or whatever surface you're doing this on and just wash it on really quickly. Um, this is a great one for like an army painting uh, sort of technique. So if you're doing a lot of models, this is a great one. It gets it done really fast. So I can see this brass technique being done on Necrons or um, or even uh, Custodes or in or in fantasy you could do like a really cool Chaos Warrior one or you know there's so many different ones that have a lot of armor on, on their you know on the models and you could get away with this using the sprays and just getting it all done really really quickly. And so we're just doing everywhere where we think we might see some metal. So what I'll usually do is just come through and just do all this as well. So all these little trinkets, everything. And then later on, you can decide if you want to keep them brass or you want to change the color, but it's it's way more effective just to hit the whole model with this, all the areas that you know are going to be a, a like at least some kind of metallic and then work on just getting that, getting those, um, that wash in there and you're just starting to see some of that brown show through and that's really cool. So I'm going to go away and do that now and we'll be back with the, the black ink wash. All right, so now once you've got the, the brown ink on, you can see here it's starting to tint that color a lot. And now we want to go in and add the null and wash. So we want to water this down quite a bit. We don't want this to be too dark. So a couple of drops in, keep it a bit lighter. Okay, very similar to what we've got going on here. So we don't have have it too heavy. Um, we do want to get some shading going on, but we don't want to overly, you know, uh, work the surface. Otherwise, it's going to become too black. And we want to keep a nice, um, I guess, slightly reddish hue to this brass. We don't want to. We don't want to just ruin the effect that we've got from the from the Room Lord brass um, spray. So we just come in here and just wash it all in, and we're just trying to get some deeper shadows happening and get the color to deepen without totally destroying it. We just build it all in. And we get some nice shadows, move it around with your brush, get that shadowing happening, and just keep working that surface until you've got an adequate coverage. So you should see now, I guess, this is kind of simulating an Agrax Earthshade, but where you've got way more control over it. So you can have areas where it's a lighter brown, areas where it's a darker color, you know, you're, you're able to really control all of this and give it the correct amount that you want, that you want to see over the surface. 
Um, and we're going to come in after this then and then add all those glazes in as well. So that's going to further further enrich in all of this. And that's where we're going to see those nice um, heated metal tones and so on coming in. And then finally the highlights. So it should look really cool. So I'm going to go away and do this and I'll be back in a second. All right, now on to the dry brushing. So we've got the, the black ink wash on and I've gone back over it with an extra layer just in some of the areas to deepen them and darken them. So we've got a bit more shadowing going on. But you can see now it's already got a lot of depth and that's just with the brown and the black. So now we want to get that real uh, burnt, like I, I guess, you know, um, heated metal look is what we're going for. So let's uh, begin before we do the, the glazing with this dry brush. So we've got our um, synthetic brush here. I'm just using one of these ones with a, with a sort of a, a flat wedge shape. I find them really good for directing uh, for sharper highlights, but you could use any dry brush you like. Just something that's got a relatively, um, you know, decent end on it. So you don't want one that's like really sort of scuffy, like for instance, this kind of one, which is better for like doing bases and stuff like that. You need something that has a bit of shape. So whether it's a round one, you know, whatever shape, just something that you can direct so you can get those nice edges. So that's what we, that's what you want. So have your paper ready, get your, um, your, st your storm host uh, silver there, get it onto the brush, rub it all off till it's dry. Just keep going like that till we get that nice dry. And we're just gonna gently buff this surface um, against the edges to pick those edges off and, and get a little bit of highlight going and just uh, bring out all that wonderful see that just get all those little edges with wonderful lights so we're going to end up with something that already already looks cool like you know if you if you didn't want to do the burnt thing like the the whole uh, heated metal thing all those extra colors you could just leave it at this and be quite happy I guess but you know that's that's fine if you're doing, I guess, more straight metals. But for this, just to add that extra bit of interest, if you can go to the step to do the glazing on this next next piece, um, I think you'll find it very satisfying. So we just keep going along and keep highlighting that up. So I'm gonna go and do that now. And then when I come back, we'll finish off with this glazing and then some final highlights and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so let's have a look. So as you can see, you get that nice, lovely silver edge to all the brass, and it looks great. I mean, you could stop right there if you really wanted to. It'd be no problems at all. It's very similar to my um, painting oily metal armor on a Space Marine that I did, and that's in, in my list of videos there if you want to uh, check that out. But um, yeah, it looks great even now. And that's because you're doing that sort of directed dry brushing and getting that nice, those nice edges very softly buffing those edges to, to give you that, that glint. But we really wanna bring this, you know, bring this up a little higher and get that depth. So that's where we get these glazes. So we've got our magenta, our purple, and our blue out. So we start off by adding the water in. We'll start with the reds. So we want, because this is a glaze and not an ink wash, we want extra water in. So two or three drops into that to really, really soften it down and give ourselves a very soft glaze. So you're very, very uh, transparent. Take a little bit off your brush. And then we're gonna start by directing it into the, into the shadows and into little areas where we, where we think you would, would see a little bit of that sort of staining of color. So we just start building in a little bit of this in all these little spots here. Just dabbing it around, finding nice little points of interest that make it feel cool, you know, just building in little tiny areas, not washing it all over. I'd start with the shadows and build out, and then you'll see little little spots where you think that would be cool. And most of the color will be directed in those areas. So anywhere where two, two armor plates meet, you know, you can put a little bit more shadow there. And we're gonna be adding some blue and purple in here as well. We're gonna be deeping it all up. Some of these edges up the top, maybe it might be getting a little bit, you know, dark up in there bring it down, but you don't want to just wash it all over the surface. You want to be really just directing it. You might go over some areas a second time and you just keep building that in until you like what you're seeing. So you should start to see like some soft reds, just gently getting into that surface there. And it's going to just start darkening everything down 
and you're going to start to see a lot more variety because the, the brass itself has a whole set of colors in it as well, which is really nice. And so you're getting tons and tons of, of variety there. Okay, can you see that? So I'm going to go through and do that now. When I come back, we'll move on to uh, the purple. All right, let's take a look. So it should be looking pretty good now. Yeah, we can see there's that beginning of the reds coming through, if you can see on the leg there. And there's just this sort of hint of redness that you'll see around the model, but it's not all over. You get, you're still getting the yellows, the blacks and browns, and that silver on the edges. It's just starting to give it a lot of depth, a lot of shine, you know, just really cool. So from here, we now want to add some of these purples in. Uh, so let's get started. So we just add lots of water to that, get it down to that glaze consistency, nice and transparent. There we go. And you, as I said, you can add multiple layers and you just keep building it up until you're happy. You just want to see that, that color shift because it's very, very subtle, you know, you can feather out anything as it dries just with the tip of your brush to, to stop the staining. But even some of the stains sometimes are nice, like in certain areas. So you don't have to really be too, too worried. You just, just dab it on in a painterly fashion, moving it around, feathering it out, moving it into where you think is, is cool. And we're going to, we're going to stick to very similar spots. So we're doing most of the shadows here, maybe a bit on the flats as well to give a little bit of purple coming through. And we're just picking the areas where we feel like a bit more color would be would be nice. So just the main kind of shadow areas, um, any, anything like that that feels like it'd be cool to add a little bit, but maybe not going all the way around. You might just hit just the edges like this. Get that in focus for you. Just building in a little bit more shadow, you know, little hints of purple here and there. It's going to blend with the other colors. It's going to come out Funnily enough, it's going to end up coming out a bit more magenta-like than than purple, but you will see a little bit of that that lavender purple come through. You're just dabbing it around and just adding a little bit of that in, just to just to see that how it just goes that nice sort of deep red. It just adds a bit more, and on the lighter areas, you'll see this little pink sort of tone coming through. And so you're just adding it in little areas all the way, just giving a hint of that that pinkish hue there just to further change and shift the colors as you go around. And so you're just dabbing it on all the way around and just give that a little pass, maybe go a second pass, whatever. So if you see here, we've got, um, if this camera will show it, it's just starting to pull a bit heavy there. So I just use the end of my brush. I've wiped the brush clean. It's just a little bit damp. And then I'm just feathering that, that edge where it's starting to want to stain and just blending it out and just removing that so as it dries it doesn't end up with a too harsh line. We are going to come back with some line edge highlights of silver so we, we can pick off some of these things and add a few scratches and, and mask a bit of that which is really easy. But just while it's drying and, and you've got like a damp clean brush you can just feather that out like that and then it goes away and you get a nice smooth blend. Can you see that? So that's really easy to do. So I'm going to go through and finish this off with the purple and then we'll come back with the blue. Okay, and now finally, we're going to be looking at the blue. So with the blue, we want to be a little bit more careful. Obviously, this will, this will darken things down a lot, which can be good in places. We're just going to be a little bit more directed, a bit more considered, and very directional about where we want this to be. So we water it down like we've done before, and we just start dabbing that in around and adding a little bit of this blue. So you won't put it everywhere, but you'll put it anywhere where you feel like it helps deepen a shadow or gives you a little bit of a gradient so you see some blue coming through. So you want to see like little bits of yellow, little bits of, of uh, purple, little bits of bluish tone, anywhere like around the rivets maybe up in under some of these to really darken them down so you get some nice deep shadows. You want to just build that contrast in and give yourself just a fun surface to look at. You just want to see little interesting little bits of color glinting at you as you turn around the model and find all those nice little moments. And so it's just a, a case of just doing that, playing with the with the really watery paint. And it's building up your, your dexterity, your ability to direct something that's really watery around, um, which is going to help you when you're doing flat colors, because this is all building up your, your, your eye, everything, as I said, your dexterity with your hand, with your brush skills, 
um, all that kind of stuff and you end up with something you know a bit more mastery over it and you're seeing how colors interact across the surface which is another important feature of this so you're, you're getting to learn about how how things interact which colors do what on what like on top of each other or next to each other you know how that affects the overall finish you know and, and that's just going to give you more I guess more confidence so when you're doing your normal paint jobs and so on you can be like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue with this magenta here you know or whatever you know just to get this little subtle tint of color and you'll be able to do that even with a flat color even if it's not a glaze like this you'll be able to just build up these little tones whether it's in flesh or on, on armored surfaces or on like cloth or something like that you just um, build up these colors in, in new ways and that's that's all good for your hobby that's just going to build up um, a stronger foundation for you so you can move forward even if you don't feel like you know much about color or about these types of things um, this is a great way to just start to learn about it and and understand how how color works because it's such a non-destructive process what I'm doing here you know if you don't like it you can easily go back over it it's it's so soft that it can be you know yeah rectified and, and fixed very easily you get a little bit of rune lord brass there out of the pot just dab it over the top and, and reconstitute like rebuild up the color very easily on those spots just because of how smooth and um, thin a lot of this is so you just go through as you can see there and just start building in a little bit of blues uh, in and around where you feel like it's necessary and make that aesthetic decision you know just go yeah i'd love to see a little bit of a blue you know maybe you want to go oh i'd love to see some going up up here you know and, and so you just feather that in and just build it up until you start to see that nice shadow there and then if it if it starts to dry you wash your brush off and then you get your clean brush and just feather that together so that it starts to join so I'm going to go through and just uh, do that now and we'll take a look at it and then we'll come in for our final line edge highlight on some of the some of the, the main edges all right and finally we're going to come in with the uh, silver here that storm host get that ready add a bit of water twirl off the brush get a nice point on the brush there okay and now what we want to do we've still got all those line edge highlights from the dry brush so you could stop right there and as you can see it's got all that wonderful color in it so easy to do you know and you can keep going you can make it darker or lighter however you want to go this is just you know a quick pass at this but you can play with it you can add more in less as i said um, you could if you wanted to if you didn't want to do the liner highlight you could re go back with a very soft dry brush just on the very tips just at the top where the light is hitting just add a little bit more silver in there and that would be lovely um, i'm just going to use the brush because again this helps you practice your techniques so we just want to hit some of these top edges so where the light's hitting so just a little bit across the top of the knee here just to bring back some of that some of that silver maybe a little bit just there you know maybe a little a few scratches across here little glints of light maybe where it's been hit by you know a weapon or, or whatever else just little scratches so I usually just go around like that and just add these little lines and little marks through the armor just to add some little glints of silver on the main areas like this and it just helps it just helps bring a little bit of life to this it's almost like a little bit of weathering so as you turn the model you just see those little scratches and it just gives little spots of silver just to break up the surface a bit and give you that nod that there's you know a bit of a bit of weathering and, and wear and tear going on on this on this it's not just a clean a clean armored surface you know just a few little silvery dots here and there maybe over the edge here you know just building that up across these like really big see this big line here we want to get a nice big silver silver line there so not even all the way along either just just across the main part so then as we turn it we're going to see that nice bright silver pop so I'm just going to go through and do a bunch of these top areas here across the shoulder a little bit here you know across that knee across these top areas here and as I said a few little scratches and little dings and marks with the with the just the very tip of the brush and just build in a little bit of that silver and we should be uh, good to go and there we have it all those little highlights in and you can see how it just that extra little step really just helps give you that bright bright 
dark dark and all the tones in the middle and you're just getting wonderful variety across that surface and this all this all over time obviously dull down you get like a nice deep dark color and the highlights will stay bright because of that silver and then as you get your secondary colors on in in, in my case i use black black's a great one because it's going to it's going to contrast against that silver and make it pop even further. Obviously the base as well, once that is colored, the, br the brass is really going to start to show through. So if we have a look at the final result here of my other one, and we can see that those colors just start to really come to life once you start adding, you know, uh, those secondary flat colors, especially something dark next to the brass. You know, it doesn't have to be black, but something a bit darker. That's going to help re really set it off. If you are doing Stormcast, then yeah, like a dark blue or a green or whatever color, purple, something something dark that will help really, really make it, really sell it and, and give you a good result. It's very, very fast. You could be pumping these out super quickly and get a gaming standard that looks really, really nice very, very quickly. Um, and that gives you more time to spend on those on those uh, cloaks and those flat areas and make them look nice because you haven't spent a lot of time really invested in in the in the armor, which is a, which is a great thing, right? That's why I love these kind of these kind of techniques because it just gives you a, a good standard very, very fast and quick and is, you know, still progresses your hobby skills, which is a great thing. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I um, hope it's given you some uh, food for thought and maybe you'll give this a go. It is very, very cool. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it for my army when AOS 3 drops and the Stormcast are out. I'll be uh, doing this. I'll do a full tutorial then uh, on, on this technique and do a, a full one for you so you can see the whole thing. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Click that like button and subscribe button. It really helps me out. And um, I'll catch you on the next one.